Here's part two of Nimrod Tabu story, Cancer Country. My dad, I'm a pass. Only my mom, eh? He come here, Mungu. To sleep. So now, Mungu, I'm coming to talk about this. My riot, Uchungu, I'm not. Oh, you guys. So, and who could I eat to an American? So get some bread. Could I eat to a dollar? We are off to visit yet another elderly woman. Hana Wambui is 50 years old and divorced. She has two children aged between 19 and 27. Both are unemployed and Hana is battling breast cancer. I am going to say that 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 I am going to say she was in excruciating pain when we met her. The last time she had chemotherapy treatment was in 2017. Since then, her children have been running up and down looking for jobs to pay for her treatment, but nothing has been forthcoming. So, I have been working on my own business. Soon, we are forced to cut short the interview. We saw Hannah's cancerous wounds. Her agony is inexplicable. She is fighting on, choosing to knit breast prosthesis to help women wear artificial breasts after undergoing mastectomy. It is a job that keeps her busy, but the pain today is slowing her down. <laughs> Her wounds are not responding to any form of medication. We got her painkillers from a nearby chemist. We bid her farewell as she waits for her daughter and son to return home, hopefully with something to eat and money to take her to hospital. It is dawn and once again we visit another patient, 40-year-old Carolina Chieng. Three years ago, she felt a lump on one of her breasts. She visited a doctor who dismissed her condition as nothing serious. She would learn later that she has cancer. A chain, a fishmonger in the city, started on chemotherapy in 2018, but the medication took a toll on her body. She has not been consistent with her chemo sessions. Na vile niambia ni yende maina theater, alafu sasa uyo mwenye nilipata daktari kwa maina theater hapo, alini vile nilifika, kaniambia inua bra, nika inua bra. Alafu, akafanya matiti yangu hivi. Kitu kubwa kama hii unakaa nae kwa mwili. Leta ilifu kumi na tatu, nikate hiyo matiti yako hili upo, upone. Ao leta NHIF. Nilikasirika, mbaka nilimuachia kila kitu hile nilitoka nae kwa daktari. Some of these internal organs, the cancers, they just hide in the stomach and there's no pain, there are no symptoms until it's always too late. And for those ones, there's not much. We are really trying to improve our detection methods, but it's proving to be very difficult. Sometimes it's very difficult to diagnose cancer because cancer is the biggest mimicker. Patients present with symptoms similar even to malaria, to typhoid, to ulcers. Um, so, and... Mm, 
patients do not come to the oncologist before diagnosis. Most of them are being managed by, in the counties by the nurses, the clinicians, uh, the general practitioners, before they are actually referred to any specialized treatment. So an oncologist most of the time comes into the care of the patient a bit late, um, especially if this patient comes from the rural areas. In Nanyuki town in the central Kenya region, I meet Wangeshi Mwangi chatting away with her son and a neighbor who has come to pay her a visit. She is also suffering from cancer. In 2015, she embarked on a tedious journey of trying to find cure for the disease. By the end of 2016, Wangeshi had only been able to complete six sessions of her chemotherapy treatment. She abandoned the other two because of lack of money. Her condition worsened and she will require surgical removal of her breast. But that is not possible now because the wound has not healed. Wakati nilifikisha 10 cycle, hiyo dawa ikakosa kabisa Kenyatta National Hospital kulikuwa mwezi wa 4, 2017, 2018. Sasa kuenda kusema ati mekosekana nikakuja nyumbani, nikakaa miezi miine vira dawa. Because of the heavy burden of footing the medical bills, she started selling assets and property left behind by her late husband. a funds drive she organized to cover the bills did not yield much and again she had to sell another piece of land what frustrates her every day is a little or no action being taken by the government to ensure that cancer treatment for the poor is made affordable what was a latani aki hiyo ni ni cost yake iko juu sana na selikali ina inastahili ifikirie hata kama ataasha nini makwaje wa yengine watu wa salatani wawafikirie kwanza juni ugojwa unakula more than 5 million na tuseme mtu kama mimi siwezi nikapata siwezi hata nikifanya ni siwezi nikapata hiyo pesa my mom tu naweza muombea tu kwa Mungu amponye juu siwezi taka kurudi vinye nilisikia sikuwa tulizika baba yangu hapa juu nirudi nyuma hata tukiapatana hivi kwa barabara ilikuwa na mwili kama yako watu walikuwa wananiuliza washila what happened naambia hakuna we then moved to Timao Farmers Area, situated about 30 kilometers from Nanyuki Town. Eli Nyokabi lives here with her 10-year-old nephew called John. In April 2018, while John was returning home from school, one of his friends struck him with a stone. Niliambia anko yake, lakini tulizuba kidogo, juwa tuko tunaona ni kama ni serious. Anko yake tu, ndi aliona umu toto. Akiwa mepitia hapo, kulikuwa on Sunday. Kwa mepitia hapo, kaniambia na umu toto na muona aji kwa hiyo masho. Ndiyo tukamuita. Tukaona masho, imeanza kukua kubwa kuliko hii ingine. Ndiyo nikamuambia hii masho, inaonekana inato, inatoka inje. Yenye. When the CT scan results came out, they were referred to Kenyatta National Hospital in Nairobi. Daktari nikamuliza na majimi, majibu imetoka aji. Kaniambia majibu ni venye utuku umeambiwa. Utuku umeambiwa ni nini? Kaniambia niliambia mtoto ni kansa konae. Hakaniambia ni hivo hivo. Sasa ni kamuza sasa tutafanya nini? Hakaniambia sasa utaenda urudi next week na urudi kume shika 20,000. Na saa hiyo 20,000 hata atujui tutakuda nini lunch ni fair tu ya kurudi tukonae. 
Since that day, Aileen and her family have had sleepless nights. The burden of raising funds for John's medication was becoming heavy by the day, and the boy's condition was fast deteriorating. He is losing his eyesight. Nursing his wound is a delicate affair. Each day when they cannot afford to travel to Kenyatta National Hospital to access treatment, they are forced to clean the eye themselves as they await for well-wishers to assist them with the money. Aileen tells me they had to turn to a nearby farmer, a foreigner, who has lived along these plains for several years. When I came back to my husband, I told him that I was going to pay $20,000. Since then, Eileen and her husband have resorted to eating one meal a day in order to save money so that John can get the treatment he requires. We visited the Nanyuki Referral Hospital to find out whether the hospital can provide cancer patients with the much needed help they require. But to our astonishment, cancer treatment is only something that people read about on posters on the walls around the hospital. In Nanyuki and also in Nyahururu, we have said at the county level we are able to do the basics. Screening and maybe attending to minor benign cancers, we are able to do that. Uh, apart from that, we, are, uh, we have been able to establish a palliative center and we are able even to constitute things like morphine and we are able to give them so they don't have to travel. A nurse tells us that patients are referred to the nearby county of Nyeri or all the way to Nairobi for cancer treatment. At the screening center within the hospital, we encountered a 13-year-old girl accompanied by her mother. The young girl has a lump on one of her breasts. Further tests would be required, starting with an X-ray, a CT scan, and possibly biopsy to ascertain whether she has cancer. This one is to confirm whether it's whether that lump can be cancerous. Then after that, we do a biopsy. That one now to confirm. It is now sampling the tissue. Yes. Okay. And, but for the time being, we can't do that. Cabra, yeah? ultrasound, or mammogram. Sadly, the mother is informed that the personnel operating the X-ray equipment at the hospital is on vacation. The mother is worried, but informs us that she'll travel to Nairobi with her daughter the following day. Cancer is a dynamic disease or condition. In this case, you find that if it is maybe, um, maybe a lamp which was there, yes, we may start cycles, but if that lamp bursts and becomes maybe a wound, then we have to look at maybe how do we treat the wound again, how do we bring maybe prevent uh, the wound beca from becoming infected, other complications which will be associated with it. But the apparent lack of capacity in the counties is causing patients like the 13-year-old girl in Anyuki both time and resources. <laughs> Back in Timau area, 61-year-old Lucy Nyambura shows her scars around her ankle, the sole of her foot. This is cancer, she says. She operates a grocery shop but now walks with the help of a single crutch. She is nostalgic about her opulent past. Together with her husband, they once owned all this land but had to sell the bulk of it to cater for her cancer treatment. At one time, doctors suggested amputation, but Mama Nyambura would hear none of it. <laughs> Other than the difficulty of walking, Mama Nyambura has also had to battle stigma. Hospital 
ile kitu wanagarimia ni kidogo sana Lack of funds has forced many cancer patients to turn to herbal medicine. For them, modern medicine is not only expensive but also ineffective. There are more than 200 types of cancer and majority of them no one knows the cause. Um, we can only name a few risk factors that contribute to cancer. One is age. As we grow older, the chances of getting cancer increases and is a risk you cannot do anything about it. The other one is lifestyle, using tobacco, um, alcohol on a large scale can increase your risk for getting cancer. When um, we look at infections, there are certain infections that predispose us to cancer. For example, human papilloma virus, which is a sexually transmitted virus, it contributes to over 90% of cervical cancer in our community. Wasengishu in the Rift Valley is one of the regions in Kenya where cancer patients have turned to herbalists. In Kapte Bay village in Tarbo constituency, a mother and son are both ailing from the disease. Esther Tanui, age 70, and Kipto Tanui, age 40, both suffer cancer on their legs. Kipto's wife left him when he started ailing. Uvimbe uvimbe tui kaanza kutoka toka na ikipasuka inatoa maji, ito yuza, inatoa maji, na inakuwa kidonda, kidonda kubwa. Kami naishi tu kwa tawa, tangu sugu hiyo, mwaka hiyo yote, mimi nimekuwa mkonjwa. Nimeusa fitu kwa nyumbani, nimeusa hata ngombe, nimeusa jechote, sina jechote, na mi batu naendelea. For several years, the two have been using herbal medicine, but nothing seems to work. Within Eldred's central business district, the herbal medicine business is booming. Sellers of the traditional medicine say cancer patients are their main customers. WHO wanatueka kuwa tunatibu two two-thirds ya population ya Kenya ama 70% lakini wagonja wote wa saratani hakika popote penye wako inatibiwa si ataitibiwi 80% of our patients would have considered alternative medicine before they present to the hospital which is really a pity but professional doctors have argued that alternative medicine has led to several unnecessary deaths. Tukiangalia zaidi watu wengi ambao wana kumbana na ugonjwa huu hawana njia ya kupata hela. Inakuwa very expensive kwa sababu kuna madawa tofauti tofauti. Captain Nui and his mother have heavily relied on herbal treatment, but a time has come to change that habit they admit. On this day, a team of doctors from the Moy Technical and Referral Hospital send an ambulance and a team of health care givers to visit the family and possibly transport them to the hospital for further examination. Kipta Nui was the first one to be examined. His septic wounds are cleaned by the nurses and eventually dressed before he can be transported to the hospital. Kwa wale wote ambao wamenisaidia hadi, hadi kiwangui, pia bado narudisha shukrani. Kiptanui is later taken to the hospital, while the mother remains behind. Cancer has been termed as the third leading cause of death in Kenya, after infectious diseases and cardiovascular diseases. Today, over 80% of cancer cases in Kenya are said to be detected in late stages, that is stage 3 and or stage 4. Goodness gracious me, what harrowing, harrowing stories, the tweets and messages.